Today we're going to create the perfect, pretty, and powerful to-do list in Notion, one that helps you stay organized, focused, and actually get things done. And the best part, we are setting up a recurring task system so you never have to manually re-enter repeating tasks again. Let's get started. First, let's create a brand new page in Notion and name it to-do list. I always like to add a cute little icon. Next, let's make it pretty with a cover. Click Add Cover, then select Unsplash. And search for an aesthetic image. I'm going with this one. It looks cute and unique. To keep things clean and minimal, I always set my page to full width and turn off backlinks, comments, and a table of contents. This keeps it looking sleek without distractions. Now, let's add our actual to the list. Create a new table view. Click new empty database, name it to the list, then hide it since we don't need to see it all at the time. The first column, the name property, is where we'll write down our task. I list a few sample tasks here, but feel free to add your own. Now let's make things secure. I'm selecting all of my tasks and adding icons. I'm going with this pin icon again. Next, let's add a select property and name it category. This helps group tasks by type. I'm adding a few options. Work personal, home, finance, wellness, travel maybe. Instead of color coding them, I'm keeping them all basic gray because I love a clean minimal aesthetic. I know some people love using colors to organize and that's totally fine, but for me, too many colors competing with each other kind of stresses my brain out, so I'm keeping it neutral. But you do you. You can color code if you like. Now let's add a priority property. Notion might already suggest this for you, but if not, just create another select property and name it priority. Now let's add three options, high, medium, and low. I do color coding priorities because it makes urgent tasks stand out. So high priority tasks are red because urgent, medium tasks are blue, and low priority tasks are gray. Now let's add a date property so we can set deadlines for our task. Then we'll add a status property. Notion already provides some status options, but I'm making a little tweak. I'm renaming not started to to do and changing its color to red. The other options in progress and done are left as they are. But here's a tips. Click show as, select checkbox. This way your status will display as a checkbox, making it super easy to check off tasks when they're done. But there's a reason we're using a status property instead of a simple checkbox property and I'll explain why in just a bit. Now let's make sure everything is neat and easy to use. Change the icons for its property to something fitting. The date icon looks good as is so I'm keeping it. Resize this column to keep it from being too wide. Then drag it to the front so it's easier to check off tags when they're done. I've already filled in some test details because next we're going to create a countdown that shows how many days are left until its test deadline. First, create a formula property and name it days left. Click to edit the formula, then use the date between function. Select the due date property, add a comma, then use the now function. Add another comma, then type days inside double quotes. Save the formula and you'll now see the number of days left until its task due date. To make it visually appealing, I'll add a ring bar. Click the property, select edit property, keep number format as number. Under show as, select a ring to display a circular progress bar. I'll recess the column to keep it neat and compact so the ring bar fits nicely without taking up too much space. If a task is overdue past the due date, the days left will show a negative number. But if a task is already completed, we don't need to count the remaining days. So let's update the formula to display zero for a completed task. Open the days left formula and wrap it inside an if function. To add a line break in Notion formulas, press shift plus return on Mac and press shift plus enter on Windows. The formula logic should be if the status is done, 
then show zero, otherwise calculate the test left. Then save the formula. And now completed test will display zero instead of a negative number. Okay, tip, make sure the status done matches exactly with your status options. If you rename it to completed or finished, you need to match it in your formula as well. For big tasks, bringing them down into smaller, manageable steps can help you stay organized and avoid feeling overwhelmed. So we're going to use Notion's sub-items feature. Click the ellipsis menu in the top right corner, select customize to the list, click add on the sub-items, toggle on sub-item to activate the feature. Now you can add a smaller task under a main task, but you might notice that the format looks a little bit off. The status checkbox is outside at the table. To fix this, go back to sub items settings, click advanced settings, toggle on show nestling toggle in title. That's better. Whenever you have a big task, simply hover over the task, click the drop down a row, start adding actionable steps. This way, a big task feels more achievable and not scary. Sub items do not automatically inherit the properties of their parent's task. So after adding subtasks, you'll need to set manually. Select multiple sub items at once and pet assign properties to save time. Then for the due date, you can set for individual task. Next, let's set up recording tasks. First, we need to calculate the next due date based on our existing due date property. I'll hide the sum of the properties first so we can focus on what we're working on. To create a next to, select formula property, name it next to, click edit formula. We'll use the date add function. Here's how date add works. We need to add starting date, number, unit. Select due date, as sample, add one as the interval number, add days in double quotes, save it. It will now calculate the due date plus one day. If you change one to five, it will add five days instead. Not every task repeats daily. Some might repeat every five days, others weekly. Instead of hard coding the number and unit, we will make it fully customizable. Step one, add new number property and name it recur interval. Enter the interval for how often the task should repeat. Step 2, add a select property, name it recur unit. Add options days, weeks, months, quarters, and years. Okay, this is important. The date add function in Notion is case sensitive. Units must be all lowercase and add with an S. Now go back to the next two formula and replace the hard coded numbers with our new properties. Replace the number with recur interval property and days tags with recur unit. Save it. Now the next due date will automatically adjust based on your interval and unit for its task. Let's automate our recurring task. For free Notion users, we don't have access to Notion automations. We're going to use a button to manually generate the next task with all the necessary details pre-filled. First, create a new property, select button, then click on edit automation. When the button is clicked, we want to do this. Click new action and select add page to, then choose your database. For the name property, select this page, then select name. For the other properties, select custom formula, use this page dot property name. Then do the same step for priority. For the due date, select at this page dot next to. This will answer the test updates with its next due date. Include the recur properties as well, recur interval and recur unit. And then finally, the sub items property as well. Now, every time you complete a recurring task, click the recur button. Notion will automatically generate a new task with all the properties intact, including the updated 
due date. Now here's an important note about sub items. Unlike regular pages, sub items can get duplicated automatically when you create a new recurring task. Instead, they move from the old task to the new one. It's not ideal, but the original task is done so we can focus on the next one instead. I will customize this button a bit more. I will use repeat emoji for this button. Resize the column to keep it compact, then move it to the front so it's always there when you need it. Finally, bring back key properties like category, priority, and days left. Before we move on to the next section, you can create a default template. To do this, click on the drop down row, then select new template. Once you've created the template, assign an icon to it and make sure to set it as the default. Now select for all views, so whenever you create a new page in your to-do list, it will automatically have the icon and you won't have to manually add one to its new page. If you're a Notion page user, instead of clicking the button every time, you can automate your recording task by using Notion's automation feature. To set up automation, click the bold icon in the top right corner to open the automation settings. Let's name it recurring automation. Now select new trigger. For the first trigger, choose when task status is complete. Then add a second trigger. When a record unit is set to any of these options, next click new action and select add page 2. Choose the correct database and answer it's set to use your default template. Now you'll need to edit the properties. Start with the name property, select trigger page and choose name. Then continue to edit all of the other the properties just like we did with the button setup but instead of this page it's called trigger page in automation settings Once you're done, click Enable. Now, every time you check off a task or change its status to Done, a new task will be automatically created with the due date set to the next due date. You won't have to click any buttons manually. It's automated, making your life a lot easier. Next, we're going to make our Notion page more organized and more aesthetic. When you click on any page, you will see all of the properties, but they are not well organized. So to customize this, hover over the area above the icon, then select Customize Layout. You can organize it to match your aesthetic vibe, but this is how I like to set up my page layout. First, I'll clean up unnecessary things like comments and discussions for a cleaner look. I'll also remove the backlink feature. We don't have a backlink for this template, but in case you add one in the future, I don't want to see a backlink icon, so click the box and send off the backlink. While we're in the heading, we can pin essential properties to the top for easy access by clicking the pin icon. I'm going to pin priority, status, due date, and days left. Next, to organize the rest of the properties, click this box, then click Add Section. I'll rename the first section Overview and create another section for Recurring Task. You can arrange the order of the sections and drag all recurring properties into this new section. I'll arrange the Overview section as well. It's all looking much more organized. Don't forget to click Apply to all pages to make these changes consistent. For parent items and sub-items, because not every task has them, I'll set their visibility to hide when empty, so no empty properties are shown. But if you click on a task with sub-items, the sub-items will be visible. You can further customize the sub-items by clicking the plus icon and then the ellipsis menu. From here, you can show properties like status, or you can add more properties if you prefer. I really love this page 
it's customized in the feature, it makes everything look so put together. But you know what, I think the category property looks a bit lonely over there. So I will unpin one property to keep category company. I'm going to unpin priority to create more balanced layout. It looks so much more organized and stunning and I love it. Notion customized lesson is endless and I like to enhance this. We're going to create different views now. First, I'll duplicate this table view and rename it today. I'll change the icon to calendar icon and then I'll filter the task to show only those with a due date of today. Oh, it looks like I don't have any task set for today yet so I'll quickly change a few due dates for today's date. Now I'll hide a few properties so we can focus on today's task. You can also turn off the vertical line. Another thing I like to today's view is to sort by completion. That way completed tasks move to the bottom and you can focus on the tasks that you haven't done yet. Now I'm going to add another view as calendar. Calendar views are great but sometimes I prefer to see my tasks in a weekly format. So I'll set this calendar view to show as weeks. I will also add the status and recording button to the view. This brings us to why I chose the status property over the simple text box property for task status. First, it actually looks prettier in this calendar view and you can spot incomplete tasks at a glance. The second reason is that when you add a board view, you can group tasks by status where you can drag and drop tasks to move them from to do to done. Managing tasks has never been this fun, right? I hope you're excited to start using your new powerful to-do list in Notion. If you have any questions or run into any issues with the formulas or the setup, let me know in the comments. And don't forget, you can grab this template for free in the description below and start supercharging your productivity today.